what is up guys welcome back to another live stream today no delay study pillow trainer we're working on different skills slash notes in the game tree just get the ball rolling here any second just gonna try to bring up the chat streams and make the announcements and then we are on our way to study the great game of Parliament Omaha. And lately, especially after Black Friday, because there was a lot of work involved, I feel a little bit rusty in terms of my ranges, pre and post flop. So I will brush up on them. And in the meantime, or in the same time, I'm going to show you guys how I do that using not only PLO Trainer, but also using the PLO Trainer Scorecard 2.0. So I would say, with this scorecard, we basically have the first 1,000 key skills for Parliament Omaha players predefined, which makes it much easier to prioritize what to work on. And we're going to start with preflop. So here we can see a bunch of different notes. We can also call them skills that are available that we want to test ourselves in. And I'm going to do that right now by clicking EPRFI. Run the script quickly. Let me actually... Hide this for a microsecond. And then we get on the way. Can make an announcement in the meantime. How are you guys doing right uh, today? This morning. I woke up like an hour ago. Study stream time. Actually been adjusting surprisingly well to the shift in time zone. Usually when you go this way back from from the US to Europe, it's kind of rough to adjust, but I do have a couple of tricks up my sleeve and it has been going pretty well. Just need to make a quick adjustment here, but we're almost there. To start plugging away. Spencer, what's up? Played my first live game in months. Made me want to grind some more life. Oh yeah, some of the life games are very soft and profitable to play in. Let me lower the music in the meantime. Okay. Morning, good morning. GMGM. GM. Okay, we're running the script. And uh, the first thing we're going to work on are pre flop 100 big band RFI numbers. This is sort of like the first base you want to start off at when it comes to uh, brushing up on your skills. Just going to play some hands here and see how we're performing. Uh, generally, my approach to this is to act kind of quick because I want to see how I play instinctually and like sort of like what my auto routine is without overthinking it. And I think that usually displays my leagues much better than trying to overthink it. I want to see like what my subconscious competence is like in this area. So we're already making a bunch of mistakes here, as you guys can tell. 
Um, we're going to review those mistakes in just a moment, but I'm going to play through 50 hands first and then look into the mistakes afterwards. This is the PLO 500 rake structure in this training, which is quite appropriate for, for example, PLO 200, which I'm going to be playing uh, most likely tonight again. I'm going to open raise a couple of hands. Again, this is EP RFI. Currently, our accuracy is 86%. Can move this up a little bit. Um, I'm going to fold this. We're going to raise. Oh, this is actually triple suited. We're not going to raise this one. I'm not going to raise that one. And basically, what this training does is it brings us straight into an environment where we have only fringe hands to work with. So we will never see aces, for example. We only see combos that are close. Obviously, some are closer than others. Um, but this makes it much easier to spot leaks in your game because you're not wasting time with unnecessary combos. We're making here a couple of mistakes here along the rundowns. Uh, and also some trips to the hands. It seems like we are kind of routinely, routinely playing wrong. 9-9-2 nine, nine, is also supposed to be an open. <clears throat> And we are two hands out. And here we are. So played 50 hands. And you can see my score in the bottom. So 78% accuracy. I'm going to go back to the sheet. I'm going to say I played 50 hands. 78% accuracy. The average EV loss in this case was uh, 0 0.01. So we didn't make like huge mistakes. However, we also didn't get the highest rating because we obviously were only at a 78% accuracy. So my sheet now tells me 78% accuracy. And the next time I go over this, I know, okay, EPRFI is something I need to work on. And uh, right now, what we're going to do is we're going to re retry the mistakes. So there's a button called retrying mistakes. And now, now it displays only the hands that we have played incorrect. So ace, 10, 8, 5, I would always fold, but it seems like it is supposed to be an open. Uh, it is a zero EV hand though. Like it doesn't make a difference in terms of EV, whether we raise or fold. Jack 754, probably just a fold. Um, Ace Jack 97, too many gaps, triple suited, we're going to fold. And this is kind of a surprise open, probably doesn't print. Um, yeah, it makes like 0 0.02 big blinds. Ace Jack 83, I would fold this, but apparently it's not a fold. Um, it's exactly the fringe hand, 0 0.01. Jack 10, 97. Obviously, the connectivity does well, also multi-way, but triple suited hands are just like not very likely to open raise. Guess we're folding this one. Would be a small mistake. Ace King blockers are opening under the gun. Queen Queen 65. Apparently not good enough. Uh, Jack 654. A lot of these 654 Broadway combos are actually open raising. If we go to categories and go to unpaired double and connect it, three low with a Broadway. Actually, only 37% of those hands are open raising. Let me look at this range for a sec. So if we happen to have a jack, we raise about 57% and the connectivity matters a great deal. So it looks like this hand does want to open based on connectivity. 99 deuce deuce is also an open. This category, two pair singles with a disconnect that only opens 20%. So most of those hands are in fact folding. If we go to the category right there, which are two pair single, then out there for a second. Um, so two pair single suited, disconnected only raises twenty percent, and no, oh, this is not this. I'm talking about. Oh, race is 71%. Let me just go back to this category. Disconnected, connected. Yeah, disconnected, please. I think I still have the other category marked somewhere. One sec. Yes. Need to unmark this one. Two pair single. And. Two pair single suited are just a few combos. Nine nine deuce deuce, nine nine five five opens. Again, very marginal in value. Apparently, king king five five. 
King King 5-4 is open raising. And uh, we repeated now the hands we we played incorrect because it's an important part of improvement is also to review the mistakes that you have made. Uh, hey, I play PLO 50, but the links are going at PLO 500. How can I change that? We are in the process right now of providing the PLO scorecard or PLO 20 scorecard for different stakes, including PLO 50. And 9 a.m. here in France. Are you in Vegas time? No, I'm currently in a CET slash European time zone. It is 9 a.m. for myself. So yeah, PLO 50 will be available like today, tomorrow. Okay. So first spot we have worked out. So the second spot is EP, uh, MP RFI now. We're going to move to this one. So now we're playing an MP. We already saw an EP. We did make a good amount of mistakes. And um, let's see if we can improve in MP. Ace-9-7-5, tri-suited. I would just fold this hand. This one as well. This one is apparently an open. One pair, single-suited, mid-pair is high. Even trip-suited, okay. Certainly a fold. Certainly an open. 10-9-8-6. Actually a fold, ace jack, eight six. Um gonna raise this one, gonna fold this one, raise. Mm, ace king six two is not a raise in MP. <clears throat> king Jack ten seven three spades. It's also supposed to be a race. Again, those are a lot of fringe hands. Queen Queen ten seven. Raise, ace king queen three with the blockers. We're gonna raise. We're gonna raise this one as well. Queen eight eight six double. I would I would personally not raise it, but it is apparently a raise. Reasonably large mistake as well. And then the ace queen three deuce is not a raise, so we have those sort of backwards at the moment. Queen ten eight five is also supposed to be a raise. It doesn't produce much win rate, but it is a raise. And then queen jack eight five as well. Uh, actually has three big blinds per hundred. This is a race. This is probably no, it's not a race. <clears throat> so as you can tell, it's quite challenging if you use the right EV thresholds straight away. So what we do in PLO Trainer is over here in the settings, we do use an EV spread. Okay, this is very strange music. We do use an EV spread, and that allows us to only show hands that are Difficult to answer. We're gonna raise this one. We're gonna raise this one. We're gonna fold, fold. We will raise, fold, raise, raise. <clears throat> raise this one. Ace nine five four maybe raise. No, it's not a raise. Pretty big mistake. Ace ten eight seven certainly raising the cutoff, but I think an MP. No MP also a raise. This one is a raise. Jack jack ten seven raise. Nope. King 10, 8, 7, raise, fold this one, fold this one, raise it up. Ace, King 5, 4, trip suited is raising as well. <clears throat> Even 6, 6, 4, 3 is raising. Okay, so we get 51 hands, 71% accuracy. I'm going to go back to our file. So we played 51 hands, 75% accuracy, and we have a zero loss. This is the EV loss here. So, you know, as you can see, step by step, we're filling out the sheet here. EP RFI, MP RFI, we're going to head over to cutoff RFI. Tip says, I can confirm the EV spread tool is super key to study sessions really allows you to not waste a lot of time with just like unnecessary holdings that you know how to play anyway. Uh, oh, I think we clicked the wrong link. We want to click on cutoff RFI. <clears throat> mm. 
<clears throat> Actually, we didn't redo the mistakes. So that was a, that was a mistake. I'm going to do this this time. Uh, 7654 trip suited. Probably fold. It's not a fold. So we are, especially in the cutoff now, too tight. Ace King 9 4. We would not raise this one. We would raise this. We would raise this. Ace 10 8 6 trip. Nope. Nope. Yes. Uh, also 9 7 5 3 is open raising. Ace 10 9 3. Jack Jack 7 3. This is a fold. This is a raise. This one. <clears throat> and we're just working ourselves through these hands to see where we are lacking in the first place and what there is to be improved on, you know. And I discussed yesterday in the live stream the question, how do you improve, is, you know, reviewing just random hands that you have played the way to go. And generally, it's very hard to build a skill set consistently by just reviewing a bunch of random hands. You want to narrow the field of what you're improving at, and you want to increase the accuracy and feedback loop, and that's what we're doing right here. So we're working through these spots. And basically what I'm doing is I'm testing my current level of competency in these areas, and I get a really quick response on how accurate I am in those different situations. It's queen 4-4. Four, four. Raise a bunch of these blocker hands. Five more hands. Okay, and the last one is here. So we have an 82% accuracy now after 50 hands over here. So 82, oh, we played 50 hands, 82. Uh, average GB loss was zero actually in this case, rounded. And that gave us the mastermind rating Let's just double check. EV loss was very small. So we only made extremely minimal mistakes. Um, if we now sort by result, we can also quickly see in the tab on the right-hand side which hands we misplayed. And the biggest mistake we have made was to open raise ace, eight, eight, deuce. This hand is supposed to just fold. Uh, lose about five big blends, 100. Seven, six, five, four, trip suited. Supposed to also be a fold. Ace King 7 5, low suit is a fold. Jack 6 5 5 is a fold. Uh, sorry, these are all raises. Um, I'm supposed to like raise all these hands here that I decided to fold. So basically, a bunch of hands are close opens that I decided to fold. And also, one thing you want to ask yourself is like, how is the environment encouraging you to play either more aggressive or less aggressive? Like the players behind you. And oftentimes, what you will find on Zoom is people are folding too much, like they're not defending their button or their big blind enough. So if anything, you're incentivized to play wider than GTO and not tighter when it comes to RFIing. On top of that, you also want to get involved into more hands if you assume an edge in order to maximize your win rate. Basically, if there are a bunch of hands that are profitable to play, GTO-wise, but also with your exploitative edge, then you are making a mistake by folding a bunch of these hands because you're missing out on profitable opportunities and that is going to have an impact, a negative impact on your win rate. Um, so retry mistakes, jack jack 9-6, uh, again, misplaying this one, should be a fold. Uh, blockers are quite key. Ace-king 7-5 is actually supposed to be an open. Okay, that was a mistake. This one is an open. Ace-queen 10-deuce, apparently not good enough to open. This kind of stuff opens, this kind of stuff opens, even this jack 10, 8, 6 hand opens, and uh, ace 8, 8, deuce is not open raising. Ace 9, 5, 4, I would open raise, but I think Solver wants to see me fold, but it's very, very close in EV. Uh, we tried our remaining mistakes, sure. Ace, king 7, 5, once again, is a block or open, and then no ace in my hand here with a single suited combination with gaps. Plays really poor against three bets is just going to be a fault. Okay, so we locked in the session. We're going to move over into button RFI, generator training. Please add the sheet to five card as well. Uh, the five card scorecard is in the pipeline. 
good luck from good morning from Sweden. Good morning back. Um, Jack four four three. So now we're training the button. Very important position. I don't think this hand opens, and we make the first punt. Raise this one. Ace ten four deuce. Solver really hates those wheel cards, but apparently this hand is a pretty big punt to not raise. Eleven big blind mistake there. Gonna raise this one. Certainly not this crap. This one is good. This one is good. This one is good. Oh, 10, 10, 8, 3 is open raising. Mm -hmm. Ace, 10, 7, 4, low suit. Okay, so we open raise that as well. Some really weak ace-x hands are raising, given the blocker effects of holding an ace. Jack, 10, 8, 5, I don't think so. We have a bunch of folds here. This one is raise. Okay. Certainly raising ace queen nine three. Sure. We raise uh five four three three. A lot of wheel cards. I don't know, maybe it's an open. No, it's not an open. These wheel cards. They really don't like open raising. Eight eight seven three is a race. Pretty big punt to not race. Ace nine nine four rainbow not a race. Hmm, seven six five three is not raising. Okay, ten eight six four. I don't think so. Ace king eight four. Sure. Six more hands. <clears throat> no, four more hands. Mistake. And we're done. So eighty-two percent accuracy. And. We are also performing pretty good on the button RFI. So looking back at this now, we can say EP and MP have been struggling with some hands. My accuracy was relatively low at 78 and 75. I did better in the cutoff and on the button, but again, still can be improved. Like higher accuracy would be better. As I said, I feel like I'm a little bit rusty in those areas. And uh, what we're going to do right now is we're going to move into a post flop spot just to illustrate how that will work. So post flop, there are a bunch of different nodes and also differentiations between board textures. On the flop, for example, <clears throat> one of the most important notes is you raise the button, get called in the big blind, big blind checks to you, and now you have, have to make a decision. And uh, we separated this in the scorecard into different board textures. So for example, unpaired rainbow ace high, unpaired rainbow king to 10 high, unpaired rainbow no Broadway. So we're going to start with unpaired rainbow ace high. Or let's just choose like some in the middle. Oh, these are all the straightening boards, all the pairing boards. We're going to choose this one here. Unpaired rainbow king to 10 high. So you run the script. This is the next training session. And you can see how seamlessly we just jump from training to training and improve skill and skill without really wasting much time. We're not like watching a video, viewing random hands. We're just stepping straight into the arena, getting instant feedback on all those hands that we're playing and uh, improve just without much waste. You cannot download the sheet, unfortunately. This was one of the Black Friday specials for the yearly PLO Mastermind members that went for our Black Friday deal. Uh, okay, so the situation is the following, single race, pot button, big blind. This is a very common note. This is something you have to be good at in order to have a good win rate. So let's get started. So ace, nine, nine, three. I don't think our hand is good enough to see bet. We could bluff, obviously, on some turn river runouts, but currently, blocker-wise and equity-wise, we're very poor. So maybe just give up, but we'll see. Now, this is supposed to be a see bet already. <clears throat> so this hand is supposed to already start bluffing on the flop with ace, nine, nine. I guess we have like three blockers, ace, nine, nine. And we're supposed to bet the flop. Next up, ace jack eight seven middle pair backdoor not flush draw and also some backdoor straight draw options. I would just check back, which is good. Then here mid set betting, uh, ace queen ten three top pair backdoor flush draw and backdoor straight draw options. Just checking back. I think some of the ten x hands do want to bet fold the flop, but with my good kickers, backdoor straight draw options around the five, and 
some decent two pair options. I don't think I want a bad fold. So we're just going to check back. Seems solid. Next hand here is Jack 986. Oh, we have the rating system here. I just asked Luke. So this is the rating system. Let me see if I can display this somewhere. So this is the rating system that we use in uh, in the scorecard, basically. So if we do end up having 0 to 25 average EV loss, 90% credit, we should be at an expert level. So maybe there is an issue with this rating over here. Let me double check this. Okay. Okay, so post flop jack 986. What do we have? Bottom two pair, some straight blockers. Usually bottom two pair plays very passive on the flop and just goes for a lot of checks. We end up having a nine and a jack. Does that mean we want to bet fold? Maybe not. Okay, we're gonna check. Um ace ace five five, just check back. Jack ten eight five again, bottom two pair. And a low straight draw, just gonna check this one. Ace King 7-5. So here we have a five blocker and a seven blocker. So we're blocking straight draws, we're blocking sets in two pairs. Blocking hands that can basically check hall or check raise us. However, we could also take a free card and improve to an ace or a king, seven five. So it's kind of close. Uh, I really don't mind just betting with our blockers in play here. That's good. So for accuracy at 88%, eight hands in, uh, eight hands in, a uh, top pair and a low wrap, no backdrop flush draw, I still think too strong to not bet. A733, here we have three blockers, 733, to the straight draw, low showdown value. So we want to bet and start building a pot in terms of bluffing or in order to bluff. A say seven five, low gutter, no backdrop flush draw, no pair blocker. I think this hand class is kind of a little bit close. Um, but I, I mean, we do have a good amount of value here. We can get called by kings, queens, jacks, 10x, 4x. So I prefer betting, but solver wants to see a check back. So this is an interesting one. When we click on the board, it opens up the exact note and we can then research our hand. So in this case, we had ace, ace, seven, five. And what we can see is that if we did have two backdrop flush draws, we definitely want to bet. And if we happen to have BDFD1, which is one backdrop flush draw as well. So the idea here is betting one or two backdrop flush draws in order to bet call the flop. But without a backdrop flush draw, the hand will be actually had. We kind of prefer checking back. Ace Queen 10 3, middle pair, not gut shot, back to on the flush draw. I guess just check. We don't really accomplish much by betting. Solver prefers betting though. Um, it's kind of surprising. We're going to open this up for a second. Good morning, Luke. So in this case, we end up having a middle pair. Middle pair checks back a lot, 72% check back. Mid pair in a straight draw checks back 65% of the time. Looks like some of the mid pair straight draws still want to pet, want to bet. Obviously, if we have a wrap, we're betting. But what if we don't have a wrap? We don't have a wrap. We don't have an open-ended straight draw. Change the syntax here, 28% betting. Um, if you go back to our exact hand, I mean, this ace queen, if we click on the hand, it, it just copy pastes it right away here. Like if we bet this hand and get check raised though, can't imagine we're gonna fold this hand. Yeah, so the idea would be bet calling the flop or checking back and uh, like betting and checking are very close in value. So usually mid pair in a straight draw, if we don't have a wrap or an open ender or like two backdraw flush draws at least, kind of prefers just checking back. 
and our exact hand was very close in value between both options. If we bet, though, the idea is certainly not to bet fold. Next up, 10774. So here we have three blockers to the straight draws, but no pair blocker. And probably still firing the flop. Like, I don't really think there's enough benefit to seeing free card. No, it wants to check back. So another mistake, not a huge one, though. Ace 10 4 3. We have middle pair, two backdoor flush draws inside straight draw. Um, like these hands are usually very close. Obviously, there are benefits checking back and proving our hand, but also making making a queen or a jack or a tenfold or pocket tens or pocket nines or something along those lines is not too bad either. Part is betting. And uh, once again, if we bet a hand like this, we're going to call the check raise. Just confirming here, going back and putting our hand in. So if we do want to know how the hand would continue, we just go to this process that I'm doing right now. Type in the hand, goes bet, raise, and we will go for the call. Yeah, so the idea is bet, call, and flop. Uh, here we have ace, queen, five, three. Yes, we do have a queen blocker, but we don't have a 10, nine, or a jack blocker that would really help to generate fold equity. So maybe just give up time. Yes. Ace, king, jack, five. Very minimal blocker effects. Just take a free card. Apparently, no. I think this is sometimes a function of holding three backdoor club blockers um, that mm, lowers the value of the free card. I guess the five in combination with the the five in combination with the three clubs um, is going to make us want to bet. We're going to review Ace King Jack. Ace King Jack. Um, Without a pocket pair and without a pair on the flop. So no queen, no six, no deuce. I would imagine the five makes a pretty big difference. So on the left-hand side, you can see a bunch of checkbacks. And on the right-hand side, you see some bluffs. So ace, king, jack, four, low backdrop flush draw with the four blocker. Here you have a high backdrop flush draw with a four blocker. Like a four, three, five blockers are apparently betting, especially if we do have a weak backdrop flush draw potential, which means our... It basically means our free card is worth less. The hand that benefits the most from betting, so if you sort by EV difference, you can see uh, which combinations suffer the most by taking an alternative line. And on the top right, you can now see that the hands that suffer backdrop flush draw potential by holding four of a backdrop flush draw or three, they suffer the most uh by by uh, not betting on the flop so they would be the biggest mistakes so that's how i you how you extrapolate or how i extrapolate uh, a deeper understanding of the patterns this is just a check back <clears throat> next hand king queen 10 8 so we don't have any blockers that are kind of relevant but we have a lot of backdoor potential so i want to see a turn 9975 very poor blockers uh, ace 533 three, just air uh, here, bottom set and a straight draw, back draw, flush draw. We obviously want to build the pot and bet. Ace, jack, 10, 8, mid pair and double gut shot. So 9 to a straight, although the 9 does not give us the nut straight. And then the king to the nut straight. I personally would just check back with the weak back draw, flush draw. Like I'm not too, too excited about building a pot, but maybe this hand is just too strong and we do want to bet. So I'm not quite certain. Um, we have one heart, which reduces our fold equity. We have no spade. I probably would just check, but maybe it's too weak. And a check is good. If you look into a stronger variation of this hand class, ace, jack, 10, eight, I do think we do find some bets if we have better side cards, like backdoor flush drop uh, potential, ace, jack, 10, eight. Ace, jack, 10, eight. Yeah, so if we have two backdoor not flush draws, we do want to bet. And once again, if we sort by EV difference, we can see what are the biggest punts. And the biggest punts are two backdrop flush draw combos that don't want to bet the flop, like at the very top there. They're just missing out on too much value. Um, here we have top two pair, like a bunch of top two pairs are just betting. Nine, seven, seven, five. So we have a pair blocker and we have two very relevant straight draw blockers holding sevens when it starts fire and start bluffing. Here we check back. Ace King 7 6. Ace King 7 6. So we have no nut gutter, but 7 6 has some, like Ace 7 6 has some blocker properties, especially the 6. 
Probably still too weak though. We check back. King 10, 9, 6. It's an interesting one. We have a 10 blocker and a 6 blocker. So in case you're wondering like why I mention always these blockers, it is because when you have a medium strong hand like here, top pair, the driving factor between aggression and passivity is if you're blocking your opponents continues. Let's say we have king 10, 9, 6 and we think about betting. Our preferred outcome is our opponent just folds the flop. So holding a 6 increases the possibility or the likelihood more so that our opponent is folding the flop because we're blocking hands that are check holding or check raising by holding a 6 and by holding a 10. So that's why blockers are always mentioned. I think this hand can go either way, but I, I kind of prefer just betting. Um, we are betting, in fact. And you can see the EV differences will be relatively small, uh, but betting is the correct option. Then here, bottom two pair, not much backup, just check back. Uh, King, queen, nine, three, middle pair, not gutter. I don't want to get check raised. I have backdoor hearts, which means we don't have a backdoor flush draw. Um, we're going to get called more often, raised more often. We're going to improve less often. So I want to see a free card. Ace, king, six, four, nut, gut shot, no pair blocker, six, four, wraps around the five, ten to the nuts. Uh, we don't really block check raising ranges that much, like 10, 9, 8 combos with a queen with a jack or pocket queens, pocket jacks. So I prefer the free card. Ace, ace, queen, seven. So no pair blockers, problematic when betting an over pair. You have a seven, which is blocking the straight draws. But probably um, really hate. would really hate the idea of bed folding with the backdoor not flush draw with clean set outs. So I just check back. Uh, ace, jack, jack, deuce. Let's see a free card. King, king, six, deuce. I mean, we do have those future blockers. However, like tens and jacks are way more relevant when betting the flop here and trying to bluff. Kings without a pair blocker and without a gutter. I mean, we're just going to check back and, and, and not start bluffing. Ace 10, 7, 5, we have a 7 and a 5 blocker. At the same time, our backdrop flush draws are not that valuable. So I don't mind just bluffing. Apparently, our hand is too valuable to bluff. We want to check back. 10, 9, 7, 6, low open ended, no, no pair blocker. I want to see a free card. Queen, queen, 5, deuce, check back. Queen, queen, jack, 8, top set. So top set with an 8 blocker and a jack blocker. Is it time to slow play? Unlikely, I would say. Let's see. No, we're just betting. This is good. King, 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 nine. Not enough blockers or equity. Just check back. Seven, seven, five, deuce. Um, a good amount of blockers in play. Nine, eight, seven, five. We have a wrap and a pair. We bet. We built the pot. Queen, queen, eight, five. Not much benefit in betting. Check back. And then king, king, five, deuce. So here we have a lot of blockers. We have top set blockers, a two blocker and a five blocker. This could be a hand that you do want to slow play and check back. Let's see. Correct. Okay, so you can see like I'm pretty accurate post flop uh, in on this board texture, and that's just because I've done training in the past, right? But if this is like fast for you in terms of me breaking down how I use blockers to make my decision, it's just you know this is just muscle memory that I'm going through. But you would be able to pick up on these ideas in your own pace when you do this training by yourself. Like here, top, bottom, no backdraw, flush draw, no straight draw. Like I think about the hand category a lot more, right? We have top and bottom, which is like top and bottom is going to play medium aggressive, I would say, as a as a hand class. But if you it depends on the side cards. So if you have a straight draw, if you have two backdraw flush draws, then top and bottom is frequently betting. And if you have the opposite, like in our case, no backdraw flush draw and no straight draw, then you usually play very passive. Like that goes through my hand, understanding how this hand matches up with a hand class and how the hand class generally plays. So we're going to take a free card. And if we look into the board, just to break this down and see if my assumption is right in terms of pattern recognition, we just head over to the strength buckets <clears throat> and we go to two pair and we go to a top and, bo and bottom pair, which is over here. So top and bottom pair with a straight draw is betting 66% of the time. Straight draw blockers in, the, in no and no straight draw blockers or straight draw, just going to check back pretty much pure. So those are the general ideas. Ace, nine, eight, deuce. <clears throat> so here we have a nine blocker and an eight blocker. Eight is, is quite valuable. It blocks straight draws, like multiple straight draws. 
Um, so we could bluff this hand. The free card is not worth that much. We have no backdraw flush draw. We don't have a straight draw or backdraw straight draw that is very valuable. So maybe just bet folding the flop is good. Uh, here we bet. Uh, a763, pretty weak. Just check back. Uh, Ace King, Jack 5. So if we choose to bet this flop, we're never folding. And I think that's fine building a pot here. Two backdoor flush draws that are very strong. Ace high and king high, backdoor non flush draw, second non flush draw. We also have backdoor straight draw options. Uh, if the turn is a queen, for example, we have a wrap. Turn could be a queen of diamonds, queen of spades. If the turn is an ace, king, jack, or five, we're also looking very strong. I like betting and building a pot. Queen, queen, eight, four. We have an overpair and a gutter, weak gut shot. It's a tricky one. Like, we benefit when betting from just like building a pot in case we turn blockers. Um, and and also we have three blockers to the check raising range, queen, queen, eight. So do we value the free card versus starting to bluff? Uh, I think that I kind of just want to start blasting here and applying pressure. Let's see. No, our hand is a bit too strong. We do want to see a free card. Uh, king, king, 10, four. So we don't have an eight, nine or a six. The four is quite meaningless. We could bet. We could bet. Um, but we don't block jack nine, jack eight, eight, nine, seven, like seven X. Like we don't block some of the lighter check raising candidates. Maybe against a tight player, this makes sense to bet. But against a balanced player, we might run into the risk of just getting blown off our hand. So I think check back is the proper play. No, it actually we do want to bet. I assume that this is going to be a bet fold. So we're looking here at king, king, 10, four. We have one more last hand after this one. So if we bet and we get raised, I don't think we want to continue. But let's see. No, we are calling. It's very close. So like we're not making much money by bet calling, but we are bet calling the flop if we do bet. And then lastly, king, 10, nine, five, middle pair, not gut shot, backdoor, weak, backdoor, flush draw. I think I, I don't want to bet. I just want to check back. Okay, so we end up with an 84% accuracy. Go back to the scorecard, post flop. Um, we did this training. Oh, we actually have to go to the log. Uh, we did 50 hands. We had an 84% accuracy. And EV loss was very small like this. Okay, so we get the label pro here. And you can see it is noted over here. So we were not at the mastermind level because we did make some mistakes, but um, certainly pretty solid, like 84% accuracy. The average EV loss was also very small, which means when you look back at these hands and we sort now by the biggest mistakes, we didn't have many punts. So one punt was King King 10 4, decided to check back. Actually, one of the last hands was that the biggest EV loss, we lost 14 big blinds over 100 by not batting the flop. It's an interesting one. Then we have Ace-993, the first hand of the training, where we decided to not start bluffing already, which was also a mistake. We, we have to start bluffing here to have enough bluffs on the turn in the river. Um, another one was on the Queen-7-3 board. We did have a middle pair with a straight drop blocker, and I decided to bet instead of checking back. Okay, we're going to do retry mistakes here for a moment. So Ace-Ace-7-5. No backdoor flush draw, we prefer to check back. The next mistake that we made is 10774, a little bit too weak to start blasting. And a few too many benefits taking the free card. This is the big punt of the session. We are supposed to bet the flop and then bet call. And then here, uh, I underestimated that the weak backdoor flush draw stuff. I mean, we have three blockers to a backdoor flush draw, uh, four blockers to a backdoor flush draw. And also we have a five. So apparently like this hand, class wants to bet the flop and start blasting. Then we have the middle pair and the nut gut shot. We are supposed to bet, but we already identified that this hand class in general is like not betting very often. So this is kind of an outlier. And then we have ace 10 7, 5. I deemed this hand to be too weak to take a free card, but solver disagrees. And then ace 9, 9, 3. I thought we had too weak of a hand to start blasting, but we actually do want to bet the flop and start building and applying pressure. And then queen, queen, eight, four, the, val the free card was too valuable. So we should have checked. And that is it. Okay. And that concludes this 
part of the training. Uh, let me take some questions from the chat. And we're going to wrap this training session up very soon. If you guys have any questions, let me know right down in the chat. I'm going to go through all of them. Um, not like specific hand questions, which is like more macro, bigger picture question. Um, Tip says, hey, Jane Anders, I want to say thank you. I took your PLO 5 course in July 2022, and I ran solves with your solver, and I have crushed for $200,000, I assume, over the last year. Thank you so much for what you guys are doing. I really appreciate this feedback. Um, let me actually take a screenshot. I'm sure the team is going to be pumped. Appreciate this very much. Put this. So... Yeah, there's no limb calling in 6 max PLO preflop unless you're in the small blind. Uh, what is the setting for this one to only get borderline hands? Um, so what I would uh, what I would suggest if you don't have access to the scorecard is that you just start setting, you know, testing and experimenting with different thresholds yourself. So let's say we go to the PLO 50 profile pre, right, like here. And then we say, okay, for EPRFI, uh, sorry about that. So for EPRFI, you instead of like you, you jump into the training, right? But then you go to range and you start playing a little bit around with the mini V and the max V. So you would say something like, Mini V is probably nothing that is a bigger mistake than, let's say, minus 30 and then max V like plus 30. And then you look into the distribution at the moment. And what I usually do is I sort by EV difference on the left to see what is the what is the biggest punt that is still included in my setting right now. And ace three deuce deuce is still in this training session under these settings, right? So I know I have to make this a bit tighter, maybe to um, point two. Now ace, three, deuce, deuce, single is the biggest punt still available. And maybe I'm kind of satisfied with these kind of these kinds of hands to show up in my training session. On the right hand side, uh, I'm going to sort by EV to see what is the strongest hand still in my distribution. Ace, jack, 10, 8 or 10, 10, 9, 8. Those are relatively easy hands to answer, but I'm fine keeping them in, I guess. I mean, some of the hands are too strong. I'm going to remove the top of here by going to point two. And now we have a setting that I think is quite appropriate and um, just based on experimentation. So it's minus two and plus two. I go to the training and I start saying minus two and plus two. And I restart and now you have your settings, you know, as, as the way you wanted it. So that's how I would recommend doing it. Do you think five card will be popular in the live game setting? I don't see, I don't, it didn't, I don't see it. I don't seem, it doesn't seem too popular to stream. Maybe hard for the average viewer to keep up and uh, more time consuming. Uh, I think five card peel is very popular. Like when we do five card streams, we do have a lot of viewers. It's, it is of course niche and some people don't play or understand five card, but that's fine. Like we're already in, in the niches, right? Like we're not playing no limit tournaments. We're playing PLO, four card, five card, maybe sometimes six cards in the future. I'm completely fine with just like being in that niche, so to speak. So in terms of popularity, I think five card PLO gained a huge amount of popularity in the last couple of years online for life. Um, it did gain a lot of popularity in live games in Europe. Will that take over to the US? Maybe could could very very much be possible. I think in the in the in the home game setting, it is it is already reasonably popular not as much in the casinos actually this is not true in some of the casinos in the u.s like in, in more in the south like in florida it seems to be the main game spread in the cash games
yeah, I think one thing a lot of people underestimate is how important the spots are that repeat themselves over and over again. Like we're looking here at just basic pre-flop spots, you know, flop batting situations, that kind of stuff. Uh, when you bet and get raised in real games, it's usually a pot size raise. Do we still call as the solver suggesting against the three quarters? I would say when people check raise you pot, oftentimes they are a lot, they're very much unbalanced and they're only playing for value. So what I would suggest is to what I would suggest is to cut out the lower EV hands out of your continuing range. So it's pretty simple how you do that. You go into the spot. Let's say you're playing a single raise pot between button and big blind. And you we just choose like, a, I don't know, some sort of random board. Let's say king six three. Bet, check, raise, and it's on us. So now we're going to sort by EV, which is already done. And in the call column, we look into the hands that are uh, quite marginal in EV and we will like cut out some of those hands. So let me just filter it this way. So let's say you look at a hand class like ace, ace, jack, five, or even lower if we look at a hand class like ace, seven, seven, four, Right, so a seven seven four, this hand here, ace of clubs, seven of clubs, seven of hearts, and four of clubs. So this hand in the solver wants to continue and float, and the EV difference, right, in this case, is going to be about one big blind. Now this seems to be like a large difference, but again, if your opponent is check raised potting you and they never bluff or not enough by any means then cutting out some of those lower EV hands is going to be the adjustment you want to make exploitatively. And by using PLO Trainer, you can quickly see what the EV is going to be and the EV difference with different holdings. And then you just cut out the, uh, and you just cut out the bottom part. Awesome for doing this, Jane Anis. I appreciate this. Uh, more questions like this how do i adjust if my opponent doesn't fold against three bets which happens very often at low stakes or mid stakes even or against certain opponents like whales and this question is answered in various videos that we have created in the mastermind for example this here by luke where he breaks down how if you adjust the solver for a low versus three bet fold strategy how a solver would adjust and what to take away from it so that's like the first part of it and we have a bunch of videos like that in the PLO Mastermind, especially if you look into the Crushing Small Stakes course by Luke, which is part of the PLO Mastermind. But then also, uh, we're currently working with MDA data at scale in order to advance this even further into, you can say like the next level where we're making more content based on, on MDA data and also yeah, I don't really want to spoil too much like what we're working on, basically. But our first approach in the first couple of years was to understand what the general population tendencies are and make videos about how to exploit that. And in the future, now we're working more on software-based solutions where you will get access to how population plays at large in different nodes and also how the exploitative sim is going to look like. But this is something that is in the work. Oh, sorry. Uh, sorry about that. My audio sometimes just changes. I need to find a, a fix for this. But basically what I was saying is we have video content in the mastermind that talks about common exploits, like this video here by Luke, how to adjust your preflop range against people that are underfold against three bets. But we're also working on 
a more software-based solution where it's not anymore as much about watching videos to understand exploits, but more so using or displaying data points and then offering solutions in sim form. So this is a project we're working on. It does take a long time. It, yeah, I mean, it takes hundreds and hundreds of hours and it also takes a lot of money. But this is something we're working on towards the future as well to implement more and more MDA slash exploitative solutions. So mixing the worlds of GTO, which is what you can find in PLO Trainer, what you can find in the scorecard, what you can find in a bunch of the videos in the PLO Mastermind, and combining that more with GTO exploits, uh, with, GTO explo with exploitative strategies. And um, it's something we work on at the moment, but you will also find numerous videos in the Mastermind that talk about exploitation as well. I'm um, just, I mean, some examples of that are something that I mentioned quite often is um, the backwash videos where he talks about how to exploit players uh, with red line play and um, basically like in a lot of the fields that you're playing you can have a positive red line because your opponents are just making so many mistakes and if you know how to exploit that then uh, things are working out well for not enough solver for a oh, yeah, it seems like my voice is back to normal. Anyway, wrapping it up for today. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed this improvement session. If you want to check out the PLO Mastermind, plomastermind.com as always to improve, get access to PLO Trainer. And we're out for today. Enjoy the day, guys. Good luck at the tables. And I